Ready? Okay. Vyavasatma ka buddhir. Vyavasatma ka buddhir. Eke aha kuranandana. Eke aha kuranandana. Bahu shakya hi anantascha. Bahu shaka hi anantascha. Buddha yo of your vasinam. Buddha yo of your vasinam. In this, O joy of the Kurus, Arjun, the resolute, decided, understanding or intellect is single, but the thoughts of the irresolute, undecided, are many branched and endless. So Sri Krishna says that for works without bondage, only one thing is needed and nothing else is needed and that's a single-minded resolute. This means, what is a single-minded resolute? These are works done with all one's heart, Works done without any traces of laziness. Works done with enthusiasm. Works done with full determination. Works done with all one's effort. Works done with good ethics and morals. Works done with a good strategy. Works done as an art. Works done intelligently. And works done astutely. So one who has a mentality with all these factors involved. In other words, a mentality of giving all one's heart without any traces of laziness, enthusiastic, determined, effortful, ethical, strategic, artistic and intelligent, such a person is not far from doing works without bondage. This is all that's needed. The majority of people can't do works without bondage because they don't have that determined mind. They're not persistent enough. This is a very inspiring story. There was a Sufi saint, his name was Hassan, he had left on a pilgrimage and he had reached a town in the middle of the night. And outside that town there was a lodge. He asked the manager if, of the town, the lodge, whether he could stay in that lodge overnight. The manager said that there was a vacancy, but there was a rule that if someone had to stay in that ho um, lodge, then he must know someone living in that town because that person will be needed to confirm their identity. So the manager asked him if he knew anyone. And if, if uh, he did, if they could let him uh, confirm his identity so he can stay. Hassan said, no, I'm a pilgrim and I'm a fakir, a Sufi saint, going to different places. I don't know anyone in the town, so how can I get someone in the middle of the night to confirm my identity? Uh, he told the manager of the lodge, I'm only going to sleep for six hours, then I'll be on my way. The manager said, no, rules are rules. Only if, if someone from the town identifies you, then you'll be stay here. Such things happen a lot of the time. Are rules made for men or are made made f men made for rules? Here, a man was made for rules. And Hassan said, fine, you're a slave to your rules. What happened? There was a tree near that lodge. So Hassan went, he cleaned the dirt from his clothes and under the tree and decided to sleep. He made preparations from, for his sleep. As he was about to go to sleep, a man pa walked past. And Hassan stood up and asked him, are you from this town? And the man said, yes. Hassan told him who he was. He said he's a Sufi saint or a fakir who was on the pilgrimage. And he told him about the situation with this lodge. This manager wouldn't let him stay there. He told the man that if he's able to identify him, then he'll be able to sleep peacefully for six hours. Then he can continue on his way, on his pilgrimage. The man said, you haven't, you've given me your background, but now I'll give you my background. There's no doubt I'm from this town, but I'm actually a thief from this town. And if you don't mind this robber, giving you a saint or a fakir, an identification, then come on, I'll do it. Hassan fell into thought. He said, uh, how can this work? How can a fakir get identified by a robber? The robber said that, um, he told, uh, uh, Hassan told this to the robber. The robber said, fine, I've got a house and it's empty and only I live there. Why don't you um, come and stay with me? He said that uh, all I've got to do left is some robberies and then you can go and sleep while I'm away. So Hassan thought that how can a Sufi saint go and sleep at a, a robber's house? Um, he decided he had no choice. So he went, 
But Hassan wrote that night, I found out that the heart of that robber was greater than my heart as a fakir. Because he wasn't afraid that, uh, so, uh, the Hassan was afraid of going to sleep at the robber's house, but the robber wasn't afraid that the saint may change him. This was the mindset. The robber was very sure that nothing would happen to him. So Hassan therefore had decided to go and stay with the robber. The robber let him sleep, closed all the doors and went out to commit his robberies. A Hassan would sleep, the robber would come back in the morning, he'd knock on the door, Hassan opened the door and the robber came inside the house laughing. Hassan asked him, why was he looking so happy? Have you brought back a lot of things or not? The robber said, no, I haven't got anything. Um, the Hassan said, uh, why are you happy? Why are you not worried if you've got nothing? It, the robber said, don't worry, I'll get something tomorrow. Hassan became very interested in this man. Hassan stayed in that house for one month. The same thing would happen every single day. The day would begin, Hassan would go on his pilgrimage while the robber slept during the day. Hassan would come uh, back home at night. They would eat together. The robber would depart in the evening. Hassan would go to sleep. And uh, every morning, Hassan would hear a knock on the door. The robber would come in. And the robber would come in extremely joyful, extremely happy. Hassan would ask him every day, you look happy. Have you come back with a lot of loot? Every day the robber would say, no, but no worries, I'll get it tomorrow. This is what happened. Hassan stayed there for one month and he slowly went on his way. Slowly his profile began to grow. He gathered several disciples together. His devotion grew and eventually a day came when Hassan had a divine experience. The disciples saw that something is happening here. He experienced God. He was having a divine experience. And they're waiting for Hassan's first words. Hassan came out. The uh, disciples were ready. The first thing that Hassan said was thank you to that thief. His devotees got shocked. After coming out of such a di divine experience, this person is saying thank you to a thief. He was praising a thief as soon as he came out. They asked him why he said this. Hassan told the entire story to his disciples about the thief and he said that in that entire month I learnt a lot from that thief. The very first thing I learnt from that thief was this resolute mindset. He had decided from day one that he wanted to become a robber and for a living and he was determined on that thing. For a whole month Hassan stayed with him. He had not brought back a single thing from his robberies. He had not managed to... Uh, get a single thing, yet every single day he came back happy, he came back joyous. Hassan never saw that robber's face down. And uh, when he came back, Hassan never saw that this robber lost his interest in his work, or ne nor did he think that he wanted to quit, nor did he think that he wanted to change his line of work. He had decided from day one that he wanted to become a robber for a living, and he did not waver from that path. So Hassan said, from that I learnt that if so, one needs so much resolve, to make a few hundred rupees or so, how much determination would you need to attain God? How much of a single-minded resolve would you need? And if only if one has such a strong resolve, a strong determination, strong persistence, can have that steady resolve. And that's what exactly what Sri Krishna is saying here. But this, I'm not advocating thieving because if you look at verse 38, it says clearly, you have to have pleasure and pain, even-minded. Just an example of how a person can have a steady Resolve a steady mindset. This mindset has three stages. The first is confused, and that's the stage that Arjun is in now. He doesn't know what to do and what not to do. After that, the next stage is that the mind knows what to do, but the mind is not determined and does not believe in it. This mindset is also not right. Vinoba Bhave, who was a freedom fighter with Gandhi, he's written one of the most authentic English translations of the Gita. He's given us a very good example. Imagine there was a judge, he was very, very strict, very, very strong. Whoever committed a robbery in that town would get a punishment straight there and then. He would give a death penalty to a lot of criminals for murder and so on. He had no sympathy for these criminals. One time it so happened that his son had committed a crime and his son got caught. So only be right in that situation that his son would have been gotten death sentence because of the crime he had committed. So the case came in a judge's court, and the judge said that we've been giving the death sentence for such a long time, and this is very wrong. If one person kills another person, that doesn't make, make it right that we can get to kill the killer as well. If one person takes a life, then if we take our, his life as well, we will fall to his level. 
Instead of that, we should give this person the right to live and a uh, chance to improve so that he can become a good person. This talk is right um, if we want to give someone the chance to remove, uh, to improve. But when did the judge remember this? He remembered it as soon as his son was accused of a crime. If his son had not come in front of him, what, if, what would have happened if his son had not come in, t in front of him? This person would have give, been given a death sentence straight away. He would have been hanged. Therefore, the judge made a decision, but without a strong belief in that decision. He had this sympathy for his son. And this level is not right. Such a mindset is being prone to be pulled by pleasure. It's being pulled by pain, gain, loss, victory and defeat. This is where a person gets sympathetic. There's a one level above this and the Lord describes it in this verse. This is a determined mindset. One should have this mindset. Because when the mind is split, it can't achieve anything. If you look at society today, the majority of people have this split personality. They have this divided intellect. They want to, they're saying they're doing one thing, but they're doing another. People say that uh, people, religion doesn't teach you that material happiness is bad. It teaches you how to be the owner of ob objects. It teaches you knowledge of what material objects are. It doesn't say they're good or bad. And we, I'll give examples of people who are materially happy, had servants, had palaces, but they're still more spiritual than people in orange clothes. But these people that say that te a religion teaches us that material happiness is terrible, and they say material uh, happiness is futile. Uh, they say that there's nothing in life. Um, that's one spectrum. At the other end of the spectrum, there's people that think that uh, materiality is everything and religion is useless. So you have, uh, who think that spirituality is useless. So they take one side, one side preaches one thing, one side preaches another. This is exactly what a divided mind is. If someone preaches that materiality is bad and that people should live in slums, they should go to the forest, but lives in a, high, a nice house, that's, it's nothing wrong with living in a nice house, but them saying that you should give up everything, that's what you call a divided mentality. And a lot of people who are religious speakers or in religion, who so-called religion spiritualists, always have this divided mindset. They say what they're not. They don't practice what they preach. And that's what Sri Krishna is saying here. You have to have this single mindset where you're practicing exactly what you're preaching. This is thinking of these people who accuse others of being too material or too religious. This is a divided mindset and this determined, uh, undetermined mindset is useless. Uh, Guruji remembers this piece by his friend Heman Shah, who was a poet, and he said that it's very easy to say that this world is bad, but it's like putting a sweet in your mouth and having a sad face. Because if you're criticizing a painting, you're criticizing the artist. In the same way, if you're saying you're a spiritualist and you're criticizing the world, you're criticizing the creator, God. So the world is not a bad place. The world is a wonderful place. But it's hip, so-called hypocrites who say that spirituality is about giving up the world. It's not. So people uh, cannot uh, leave an item of luxury, but they keep complaining about it. This happens a lot of people's mind. That people make talks of ethics. Uh, there's this thinker who's talk, uh, talked about such an event. We went to someone's house. His friend was an education minister of the state. He had two sons. And he, was, uh, he asked him uh, what his two sons were doing, who his two sons were. He said that his two sons were going to school and they were studying. This education minister then started complaining about society, how society was getting bad, people are not getting the right training, right education. He says that he keeps, he keeps doing a lot of things, but people are just not improving. He kept com complaining about youth going down the wrong, wrong road. This thinker asked the education minister what he wanted his children is, to be. This education minister said that he wanted his children to be, uh, achieve great things in the field of education. He wanted to become chancellors of universities or education ministers. The thinker asked the education minister if the way his children are going at the moment, whether they'll be able to reach that position. The education minister said no, because of their behavior, the attitude is not right. First of all, they have to make compromises. Then they, only they can get to those positions. The thinker said, why on earth are you then complaining about society? If your own children, you're telling your children that they have to make changes because of the way they were brought up, changes in the attitude to get to where they are, then how can you expect other people in your ministry, within your field to go advance? How can you expect education to improve? He's wearing a mask. He's saying how bad people in society are and telling people how good his sons are. And he's wearing this mask. 
But this is exactly what a split personality is like. Telling other people what they have to do when he's not practicing that himself in his life. Big mistake. That's what a lot of people in society does. They want something and they're prepared to do whatever it takes to get the, that, not prepared to do whatever it takes to get that thing, but they keep showing themselves as a good person. Why they're like this? There's only one reason. They have a split mindset. They don't have a resolute mindset uh, that they want to live a good life, want to do good deeds, and that's why, and that they only want to take what the Lord gives them. These people are not knowledgeable. knowledgeable. They don't have a resolute mi- mindset, and that's why the thoughts are many branched and endless, because they don't believe in it. They say it, but they don't believe in it. After reaching certain states comes a third state where the thoughts come to an end. Your thoughts only come to an end when you make a decision. Once you made that decision, then if you have not made that decision, your thoughts will be endless. We describe one of the eight four techniques of peace of mind of having a goal, making a decision, what you want to do. Because an empty mind is a devil's workshop. As a simple explanation, when guests are coming to your house and you're discussing the menu with your family, uh, you're discussing what to make, then that discussion, uh, everyone has different things to say. That discussion will go on for ages and ages and ages. People won't come to a decision. But if you've decided from the beginning what you're going to cook, that gets rid of the arguments, that gets rid of the dialogue. There'll be no need for those extra thoughts and that mind will be calm because it knows exactly what to do. Once that decision is made, then there's no need for thoughts because he's told earlier that short thoughts show you the futility of everything. Whenever you go up to revise for your exams, um, you've got a day, you say it's too cold, it's not comfortable. These are thoughts. They show you the futility of everything. So you have to go beyond thoughts. Uh, once, uh, in this irresolute mind, the thoughts keep coming up and up and up and you never come to a decision. The thoughts are endless. Um, the word used for calm is sant, uh, sant. S-A-N-T, and it's a word made up of the letter S and A-N-T. Um, A-N-T, ant, means end, and S means thought. So a sant person, a peaceful person, his thoughts must come to an end. So as long as these thoughts are coming, this person will have no rest. And when the thoughts calm down, then the mind also calms down. So only when the thoughts...